Hello everybody. So let's talk about E3, namely Microsoft. They released their new console, or released the specs of it. Five hundred dollar price tag is really not too much for the upgraded console. It's not a, it's not the next gen, but it's an upgrade. What troubles me about it is. Um, what good is a console if you don't have that many games for it? Or if the games are a serious downgrade from PC? Especially because if you have a PC, there's a good chance that it's... That you can get Microsoft... That, you know, it's Microsoft. So... The big one. Let's talk about Assassin's Creed Origins. When it comes to the Assassin's Creed storyline and the Assassin's Creed franchise... It hasn't been good since Black Flag. That was the best one that I personally liked. I don't think that this needs to continue. And not to mention Origins already has a problem with it right off the bat. And that is the console releases that is for the Xbox and the PlayStation 4 are going to have a frame rate of 30 frames a second compared to twice as much on a PC. The game's not even out yet. And there's already an issue. When it, and when it comes to Assassin's Creed, you know there's going to be issues at release. There has been for, I mean, a long time. They don't polish it. So knowing that they're not going to polish it, or I should say taking a wild guess from the last few entries that they've had and that they've already have a frame rate issue don't get excited for it be skeptical because if you decide to run out and pre-order it and da -da 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 -da, that's what they want you to do they want you to spend a hundred and twenty dollars for a game that might not even be worth it I mean, think back to the last few Assassin's Creed. You had either had a boring storyline that just failed to grasp the interest. And then before that, you had one that was so buggy and glitchy that it was downright laughable. That you And Ubisoft got away with it. They feel like they got away with it because they're doing it again. So don't get excited for that. Another one to not get too excited for is the Sony PlayStation's re, re, remastered edition of Shadow of Colossus. Now, Shadow of Colossus is one of my favorite games of all time. I love it. It's awesome. But, just, have you ever heard of the phrase, stop beating a dead horse because smoke's starting to come out of it? They're going to the well again. It's already, you know, and they're saying, oh, it's a frame-by-frame -frame remake. It's going to be a complete remastered. Why not just use a similar game mechanic on a new game? Create a new franchise out of it. Why not do that? Why not let your creative mind flow? But then again, remakes and sequels and re-releases were the theme this year. All except from Nintendo. Well, actually, no. Even from Nintendo, even though they haven't made a new Metroid game in years, they're coming out with two new Metroid games, which people are saying, well, that's a sequel. Well, it's something they haven't done in years. They've, Metroid's been pretty much off the scale for that, or has been off the, the radar for that. We were expecting it. We were expecting one, but to come out with two is a definitely good surprise. Um, other than that, the whole theme at E3 was just, we're going to re-release this in VR. Even though we re-released it like four times. We're going to re-release this. Re-release that. What happened to the creativity? See, this is one reason why a lot of people are going to indie gaming. Are spending more time on that. It's not just the price. 
It's the fact that creative minds can create a great game. You don't necessarily need great graphics to make a great game. Look at one of the greatest selling games of all time, Pac-Man. Its graphics are ho-hum, and by today's standards, it's downright laughable. But, it was still, it still sells to this day. I mean, there's still people buying Championship Edition Part 2. There's still people buying variations of Pac-Man. And that's because some, you know, gameplay was great. It was, you know, it's an awesome game to go on. Matter of fact, if I set up an old arcade cabinet, old Pac-Man arcade cabinet, put it anywhere, I guarantee you there's going to be people playing it. There's going to be at least a few people popping into quarters. So with Assassin's Creed already saying that they're, you know, it's all, Ubisoft's already saying, oh, it's going to be a downgrade. And then let's look at EA and their uh, monopoly of sports titles. They're, they've announced that they're going to have a single player, a single player mode for one of their, for their football game or American football game. Isn't that something that fans have been asking for? for years instead you're focusing on making sure the grass graphics is rendered properly and then saying oh yeah this is definitely worth hundred and twenty dollars for about 10 11 months then we're gonna come out with the new one it's gonna make that one obsolete that's why I don't like sports games too much that's why I don't really care for them it's not because I don't like sports games I don't like football or anything like that it's because every year the one previous is completely, completely rendered obsolete. There's nothing unique about it enough to keep it in, to keep it going. Same thing goes with the NBA, NHL, and uh, same thing goes with the other titles. You know, what I would do is if, if I had the license to make a football to make a game off the NFL, I would make it a I would kind of like World of Warcraft where you had to pay per month type of thing, a smaller fee of course, much smaller fee. And this have it continuous where you build your own team. You set up your own team and through getting, you know, getting your wins, getting better and better and as you build up that gives you more capital to work with when it comes to purchasing new players drafting you know draft numbers stadium upgrades and things like that that's how i would do it but i would make it a continuous thing where you're constantly working on improving the game rather than just waiting for 11 months and then coming out with something slightly better like all oh, the grass you can now see the blades of grass in it but the gameplay still you know, blocky and chunky and things are still not going to work properly. But the, but you can see the grass. I mean, there's something that was in a much older football game that I'm trying to remember right now where if a character was injured, it would actually show the injury mid-play. Like, he wouldn't just get to his mark wait for the game, wait for the play to finish and then go oh I'm injured like they do with today's Madden that's not nearly you know to me it just makes a lot more sense to have that which is something that it hasn't been seen in a while in Madden at least not that I'm aware of but back to the regular back to all of E3 because there's a couple a few more things to talk about Monster Hunter World. This looks intriguing. This looks this looks good. I like it. But again, there wasn't much information released on it. There wasn't really a huge thing. It'll probably come out sometime next year. Is pretty much all we have to go on. Um, Nintendo also released a um, an, an RPG for the uh, 
Nintendo Switch, an RPG Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch. Um, keep in mind, the Nintendo Switch has a very limited memory. That's something that they're going to have to work with. So that can be an issue. The size of the RPG-wise is probably going to have to be relatively small. Now, granted, for Pokemon, that doesn't really mean much, but still. Either that or it's going to be a hard drive killer. It's going to be a hard drive space, just gobbler, the eater of hard drive memory. Which I personally think Nintendo needs to come out with a model that has a better mem better internal memory so that you can actually have these games. Now granted, there's no need to install the game into the system if you have the little uh, mini cartridge. But still, it's like, it's the memory, also downloadable games. I mean, I think there's already a game that exceeds its, exceed the, that exceeds the Nintendo Switch stock memory, where you have to buy, like, right off the bat, when you buy a Switch, you have to buy a memory card. External hard drive support would be great. That would, that would solve the problem. But... If you notice, there really wasn't much else to talk about other than remakes and stuff that we've already seen, stuff that we've already heard, stuff that they've already leaked out. There's also going to be a um, an evil an evil within sequel, which you knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen because nobody wants to be creative. Everybody's scared of making a new IP nowadays. Everybody's scared of it. I mean, I remember one game that Atlas did years ago called Catherine. Very unique puzzle game. And I thought the game was great. I thought it was a fantastic game. It had a little bit of the storytelling throughout the day scenes. And the nighttime was the uh, nightmarish puzzle solving. And that's a game that I would like to see get a sequel. Which I, at, by this time, I really, really doubt it'll ever happen. But I think that's one reason why people don't want to, you know, companies don't want to explore a new IP because they, if it's a miss, it's a big miss. And yet there's Call of Duty 15,000 coming out. You know, there's like, oh, a new Call of Duty, oh, a new Battlefield. It just feels mundane. It feels like there's no innovation. I mean, look how many times Ubisoft has gone to the well for... Psh, name a game. Name one, and I guarantee you, if it's a successful game, Ubisoft has dug into that so much that it's just not going to be worth it. No big surprises for E3. Nothing spectacular, nothing grand... Everything just seems ho-hum. And that's a shame. That really is a shame. E3 is the one thing that it's, the, it's an event. That all the podiums are pretty much in a contest form of who's going to win. Who's going to come out on top. Who's going to have the best conference. Who's going to have the best games released. Who has the biggest news. And Microsoft needed a solid win this year, in my opinion. Because over the past few years, EA has nothing been, EA has been down on Microsoft for the past few years. So I'm thinking, okay, they're going to come out swinging. They're going to, you know, we're going to get some awesome stuff. No. Microsoft still has one of the better press conferences because everybody else is just kind of like, here, here, that's what we got. That's it. And to think there's people that pay money to actually go to these things, and a lot of it. It's just, it's sad. It's just a remake, a sequel that no one really asked for, a prequel. And it's stuff that, you know, with Sony's case, it's stuff that we've, most of it is stuff that we've known for months. Like, we've known there was going to be a new God of War game. We've known it for a while. 
yeah, we weren't all that familiar with the, um, the, the mechanics of the game yet. But you didn't really unveil too much either. And that's just, that makes no sense of why the, just, it felt like a press conference update that you could see on Twitter. You know, that's what it felt like to me. So with hardly anything really to go on when it comes to releasing new IPs, new hardware add-ons, new anything. E3 was a huge disappointment this year. Nothing really spectacular jumped out at me. And people might say, oh, you're missing this game, you're missing this game. Well, I'm missing them because they're not, they obvious, for obvious reasons, it didn't jump out at me. It didn't latch onto my brain enough for me to remember that it's going to happen. Well, there's also the South Park game, which I was excited for when it was first released, when it was going to come out first. They held back on it because it wasn't done yet. This I applaud. I really do applaud them on this because, simply put, if a game's not working, if there's something wrong with it, don't release it. Hold it back, which is what they did. But did you have to waste airtime on E3 to announce that? Were you that low? Because you could have just released that on Twitter saying, Oh, you know that game that was never canceled? It was postponed while we're getting ready to release it. That's all they had to do. That didn't require a big theatrics because it was already, you know, it's, it's old news. It's already been there. That's like if I held a big press conference saying George Washington was the president of the country. It's like, yeah, duh. Overall, E3 was a disappointment this year. Nothing really, nothing is really jumping out at me. And I'm trying to, trying to go back in the mental Rolodex in my head to see if there's anything that I could think of that's really worthwhile. Something that you could latch on to something that a game franchise I want to get a part of something I want to play and I'm not getting any of that I'm drawing up blanks here maybe this E3 is a lesson maybe it's a lesson that patience is a virtue because if you're patient don't fall into the hype, especially around Assassin's Creed Origins, because I know a lot of people that are really excited about it, and it's like, do you not remember what company makes this? Do you not remember their practices of what they've done in the past? If you do, you'd be a little more skeptical, especially because they already announced that there's going to be, you know, the frame rate on consoles is only going to be 50% of what's capable on the PC and they go, oh, well, it's got 4K graphics. Okay, well, if it's only 30 frames a second, then it really doesn't help much, does it? It doesn't immerse you enough, does it? And some people may say, well, the human brain only processes 30 frames a second. No, it doesn't. No. Look it up. We see a lot faster than that. I don't even know why people argue that point. Saying, oh, the human eye is only capable of seeing 30 frames a second. That's not even close to being true. I mean, it's like, you could double or even, tri maybe even quintuple that, and maybe you might be a little more accurate. Maybe. I don't know, I'm not a mathematician. I can't add that quick. But still, we know... Anybody that plays PC games, anybody that's seen a Blu-ray, knows that we see faster than 30 frames a second. Anyone who argues that we see at least 30 frames a second, we see at least 60 frames a second, at least. That's the bare minimum. 
and a lot of time and we know that there's a big difference between 60 and 30 so to already announce that the frame rate for consoles is going to be at 50 percent of what is done on the computer what is done on pc And the game's not even done yet. And already saying, oh, well, we're only going to do it this way for consoles. Great new console, Microsoft. The one game that was hyped is... Pretty much doesn't justify the purchase. Already. Oh, other than a slew of indie titles, which you can get on PC. And get your 60 frames a sec. You know, it's your 60 frames. Nothing else. Nothing else is coming to my mind, and I'm not going to sit here and try to think of it for 20 minutes at a time. Overall, the moral of the story is don't buy into the hype. Don't buy into Assassin's Creed Origins just yet. Wait. Granted, now we got to wait a few months because it's not being released right now. We got a while to wait. Keep your finger on the pulse. Just don't buy into it yet. Because they've already announced a problem. And Ubisoft also, you know, they have a they have a history. Assassin's Creed it does have a history of not being polished. Or in some cases even look like they it's been tested before release. So hold back on your hold back on your excitement. Restrain yourselves. You might wind up being grateful. I'll see you guys next time.